In this video, I'm going to demonstrate Bayes Act using a simple interactive simulation. I will do a simulation between a tutor, the agent, and a student, the client. First of all, we're going to take a look inside Bayes Act Interactive.py. So this is the Python program that we're going to use. And there's a few settings that we can change, uh, and, but these will be the default when you download the code. First of all, we have the agent's knowledge. And so this describes, does the agent know the affective identity of the client when the simulation starts? So a setting of two means that it knows these, the affective identity of the client. A setting of zero would mean that the agent knows nothing about the client. And I have another two videos describing simulations when this is the case. The agent knows its own gender, male, the gender of the client, female, its own affective identity of tutor and the affective identity of the client, which is student. There are a few other settings as well. And uh, these two in particular, I will note, so BB agent, BB client, give the agent and client's ability to modify or change their identities as they go along. So if an agent has a more flexible personal identity, this, these numbers could be, this number here would be set higher. This number here. Uh, there's also, you also need a behaviors and an identities affective dictionary. And these should be called fbehaviors.dat and fidentities.dat. And you can get these from the Interact applet. I've also included a set with the Bayes Act distribution. And you can read more about that in the readme. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to start up our simulation. So we call Python 2.6 Bayes Act Interactive. And we'll see a few things that start off here. So it says what are the different parameters that are being used. And then we get the expected value of the fundamental sentiments. So this is a nine-dimensional vector. And it describes some aspect of the mean of the probability distribution. So Bayes Act, remember, is representing fundamentals and transients as a probability distribution. And so this vector here is the expected value of that probability distribution. So we see that it's 1.51, 1.45, minus 0 0.18. This is the affective identity of a male student, a tutor. And over here, the last three entries are 1.49, 0 0.31, 0 0.75, so these are the affective identity of a female student. The three in the middle are the behavior. It's important to remember that in Bayes Act, the agent always occupies the, the first three dimensions of this nine-dimensional vector. So this is the agent's affective identity, and the client's affective identity are the last three. In affect control theory, or in interact, the actor and the object person swap every single iteration. And so they would move from one, one side of this nine-dimensional vector to the other. But in Bayes Act, they stay in a fixed ordering of these dimensions. So what we get is the agent is going to go first. And here is the Bayes Act suggested action for the agent. So 1.21 minus 0.15. And this is the closest label to that, which is to compromise with, the closest label in the affective dictionary. So there's a number of things you can do from here. You can pick any action you want, any behavior. You can quit. You can just hit enter to take this default action, compromise with. Or you can type any digit to take the actual action suggested by Bayes Act, which is this one up here. So that's what we'll do. We'll do that one there. The agent will do that action, and then we see the updated fundamentals and transients. We see that the agent still thinks of itself as a tutor, but now its estimate of the identity of the client has changed a little bit, not very much. The closest label in the database has shifted a bit. We have a fairly low deflection here, and here are the suggestions for the client's action. So 1.97, 0 0.59, minus 0 0.1, and there are the closest labels in the database. So again, we'll take the default action, and then we'll go back, and it will be the agent's turn again. 
Now we could do something here, like say the agent does something a bit crazy, a bit not deflection minimizing. So the agent is going to yell at the client. So this is a tutor yelling at a student. We see the deflection has gone way up. And the, the action for the student is suggested to be this thing here. Let's say the student also does something a little bit unusual. So the student curses the tutor for yelling at him. Deflection goes up and uh, we see that the identity here of the client from the agent's perspective is going to be shifting a little bit, but not very much. Again, if we change those parameter settings in Bayes Act Interactive, we could get this to change more. You can see the other two videos to see how this would happen. So let's try and restore uh, a nice interaction here. So we'll do exactly the action suggested by Bayes Act a couple of times and we'll see the deflection coming down. So we're down to eight and another one, we're down to seven. And see if we can get this down, there we go. So now we're down below five. Uh, and I'll do one more action here. And even one more. And now after the 10th action, what we'll see is that Bayes Act will compute the identities from the samples. So it's going to try and give us a better feel for what the probability distribution looks like. So this here is the mean or the average of the, the expected value of the fundamental sentiments. And then what it will do now is it will look in more detail at this probability distribution. And it will look at every single sample that's used to represent the distribution and tell us how many samples are closest to which the uh, identities in the database. So for example, for the client, the client's affective identity, uh, there are 63 out of 500 samples that are closest to house guest. There are 35 that are closest to visitor, 32 that are closest to brother-in-law, and so on. For the agent's affective identity, so it's identity about itself, tutor is the biggest one with 108, adult, and so on. So this sort of gives us a way of having a little bit of a better feel for what this probability distribution looks like. Of course, the best way to look at it would be to plot it out in three dimensions and see what it looks like explicitly, but our simulator doesn't have the ability to do that as of yet.